This is my go-to drum recording studio setup for 2023. Convenience, high sound quality, and fast results. Hi, I'm Ed Thorne, here to help you make the most out of your home studios. Recording drums can be a ball ache, especially if you're doing it on your own like I do. The Evo audio interfaces remove a lot of this pain by automatically adjusting the input gains for you, taking the guesswork or trial and error back and forth gain staging out of the process. And this happens in just 20 seconds simply by pressing the smart gain button and arming each channel you want to record. Play for 20 seconds, hitting everything on the kit at the level you'll be playing at, and boom, your gains are set. Now that's easy. With the interface sorted, we obviously need some drum mics. Lewitt recently released their Beat Kit Pro set of studio and touring grade drum mics in a very sturdy, roadworthy Peli case. In this video, I'm gonna demonstrate how this pack of microphones sound, and then I'm gonna add a load more microphones to the kit, which we're gonna put through the Evo SP8 preamp rack with a very special microphone as the room mic. And finally, I have two more tools you absolutely have to check out to maximize your drum sound instantly, but we'll discuss that when we've recorded some drums. The Lewitt Beat Kit Pro Drum Mic Pack costs approximately £900 or $1,000 and consists of seven microphones, but actually it's eight. The Rex 640 Kick Mic is a dual capsule microphone comprising of both a dynamic mic and a condenser mic in the one housing with separate outputs for both. Now I think this would be a really cool feature on a snare mic too. Lewitt, maybe that's a good idea. The two small diaphragm pencil condenser microphones feature a 12 decibel pad, an 80 hz high pass filter, and air mode, which imposes a lovely high-end EQ bump, lifting about four kilohertz and peaking about 12. This is lovely on acoustic guitars for clarity and helps bring a crisp, clean, modern, glassy sound to the overheads, which I really like. To hear a mix of an entire band recording with these pencil mics, check out the Steve Majora mix on my website. Now the Tom and snare mics could also be used on brass and other woodwind instruments and sound like a modern version of the SM57 with a much smaller footprint. All right, so we've heard the full kit, and I think you'll agree they're good quality, very clear, detailed sounding microphones. Let's listen to the kick dynamic mic. The kick drum mic was placed just inside the hole. And the condenser. So between the two, you've got both sonic options. You've got the low end thump of the dynamic and also the top end clarity and punch of the condenser. Let's listen to the snare. Now there's a clicking going on there and I'm not entirely sure if it is hi-hat bleed or not because I tried having the snare mic attached to the hi-hat stand, which I'm not gonna do again. I think that was a mistake because I think the clicking is vibrations coming through the mic stand and causing the diaphragm to rattle. I don't think it's hi-hat bleed, which means that the rejection of the hi-hat bleed is remarkable. I think it's more the clicking. So lesson learned, I won't be doing that again but the rejection sounds good. Let's listen to the toms. Now the heads are a little old on the kit at the moment, so they could have sounded better, but again, it, it's just a full, quite rich sound. And the overheads. Now 
Now, it had air mode on, which, remember, is a 10 to 12 kilohertz lift, which gives it that really spacious, airy, clear sound. But the detail and the transient response is just, is just lovely. I have no complaints. So this 7 slash 8 mic configuration is a standard close mic in setup, but let's add some more microphones to enhance the level of control we have in the mix and make this kit sound huge. So I'm adding a dynamic mic underneath the snare drum to capture the snare wires, an LCT-040 on the hi-hats because adding reverb to a hi-hat mic can make them sound really thick and juicy. And also I want more control than just the overheads. An under-ride microphone to even out the stereo width created by the hi-hat mic. And a knee mic in between the kick, snare and toms to capture the attack of the beta and the resonance of the snare and tom shells. And finally, a mono room mic. And for this task, Lewitt have kindly sent me their flagship 1040 condenser microphone, which comes with its own analog modeling system and tube power supply. We can see the EQ linearities of the variable tube characteristics for this mic on the Lewitt website. We have clear, warm, dark, and saturated settings. Now I want the rich harmonics and gentle compression of the saturated sound, which also looks like it'll add some low end, perfect for a thick sounding room mic. We'll bypass the low cut and I want the wide cardioid pickup pattern. I didn't even know this was a thing, so let's give it a try. To record these extra mics, I have linked up the Evo SP8 to my Evo 16 via ADAT. To learn how to do that, check out this video. Now, smart gain can be adjusted for all 16 inputs here at the same time. Check out this video for more details on how that works. So, we added the snare bottom mic, let's listen to that. And again, much like the snare top, quite good rejection from the kick drum. Now, I did position this facing away from the kick drum, so it should, should be better, but still good rejection. Uh, Hi-hat mic. Just crisp and clear. <laughs> I've labeled this crotch mic. I'm meant to call it the knee mic to be polite. This is nicely in between the kick and the, the shells of the drums. So it's, yeah, it's picking up some rattle of the snare, some of the crispness, some of the resonance of the of the tom shells, but the kick, again, it's just getting a nice punch, adding some clarity to the kick drum there. The ride. And you'll see I've panned that the other way to the hi-hat, just to maintain that stereo imaging. Now, the room mics with the LCD t LCT1040 tube. There's two outputs on this analog. It's not a preamp, it's an analog system. We've got the tube, uh, which I dialed all the way to the tube, and then you also get the FET setting out as well. So let's listen to the FET setting. So the tube is, is, is definitely a, a little bit more saturated, it's a bit fuller in the low end, it's a little bit darker. As you could see by the frequency curve earlier, there's, there's a little bit less top end. So I would probably leave the FET out and just go with the tube. I blended these slightly, but let's listen to how they all sound together now. So without the extra mics. And with. Now, obviously, it's a little bit louder because I'm introducing five more signals, five more channels to the signal. There's just, there's a richness really coming from the crotch mic and the mono room mic. All right, the next secret weapon and key to producing good sounding drums is the studio is the following. But first, tell me which one sounds better to you.
Now you might just be thinking, well, they just sound different. But actually the first one, when I had this bypassed, all the audio was as it was recorded, which was slightly out of phase. Now I purposefully didn't spend any time trying to get the phase aligned with these microphones so I could demonstrate this to you. The phase alignment is happening with the Melda Productions M Auto Align plugin, and it's really easy to use. Simply load an instance onto every one of your drum channels. Now I personally avoid room mics because they're meant to be delayed audio signals. That's what gives the drum sounds the, the girth and the size when you bring in the room mics. So load an instance on each channel, make sure they're all set to the same group, which is drum set, which happens to be the default setting for this plugin, which is really useful. Play your audio and click analyze. and we can see how many samples and milliseconds it is delaying each audio source so they are all getting played in phase. It's a really easy trick and I highly recommend using this if you're delivering files to a producer or bouncing a stereo mix for social media. It just makes your recording sound a little bit more professional. Speaking of bouncing a stereo file for social media, let's add in this next plugin which is Soothe 2 from OX Sound. And what this is, is a resonance suppression plugin to get rid of any nasty hums and resonances and basically frequencies we don't want without having to go into every single channel or do some extreme bus EQing. And you can see all these troughs here that are coming in is the plugin actively suppressing frequencies that it thinks are resonating too much whilst maintaining the integrity of the original signal. Once we've done that, let's add on the BX Townhouse bus compressor for some glue. That's bringing everything together, gluing it together nicely to make it sound like a proper drum kit. Next up, I'm adding a little bit of reverb just to thicken the sound out even more. And for this, I am using the Universal Audio Ocean Way Studios. So this setup is great for anyone recording drums at home if you're on your own or with a band in band rehearsals and even live shows. The mics sound really, really good. Smart gain on the Evos and the session recalling makes recording a doddle, especially if you're on your own. An M Auto Align means I can deliver perfectly in phase files every time. Follow me on Instagram for frequent behind the scenes drum recording and song mixing videos. Thanks for watching, it's been emotional. I'll see you on the next one.